Adam, do you have a laptop? I don't, sorry. <laughs> you want a feed stick? <laughs> yes, you've got one. Uh, Sanjay, Sanjay. <laughs> Georgia, so, um, <laughs> <there's>, oh, <laughs> they don't have to be a lot of What do we need? Uh, Does anybody have a laptop? <laughs> it's alright, I'll bring it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we have some, yeah, we're going to turn this on. Um, in the absence of AV, I will talk a bit about um, why Hermes is, how it came about, and really instead of just giving you the spiel from last time that I did it, my bad bit, TCT, whatever it's called, they all merge into one by now. Um, Hermes was. The logical progression from Type Narrow, if you're familiar with that product, um, it was our first kind of all in one extrusion system. Uh, and it was a hack. Basically, we created the V6, and then we were like, well, we've got a hot end, and now we need an extrusion system to be on the top of it. So we designed Titan, and Titan clams on the top of the V6 and drives filament into it. And then we were kind of looking at Titan, and we were like, if we chuck away the faceplate and put a heat sink on the front, then we'll be able to screw a heat break directly into that. And so we had all these injection molded parts and we created this machine thing that went over the top. And Titan Aero became a really successful product, just like that. But because it inherited so much technical depth from the previous extrusion systems that it kind of replaced and built on, it was really suboptimal. So there were like machine features that were very expensive that had to interface with injection molded parts. So we started Titan Aero with a couple of objectives. Number one is clean slate design um, that, that is completely optimized for manufacturing scale. We're now uh, privileged to be in a place where we're that? producing... I'll let George sort that out. If you can get that running, I'll use it. But for now, I'll just bring it some more fun. Um, we're, we're in a privileged position that we're, we're making thousands to tens of thousands of units per month. So we needed to shift from, say, machining, which is how we built Titan Aeros, uh, to processes like die casting, um, powder metallurgy, and metal injection molding. So Hermes is designed to be built at scale and at a sensible price that makes sense for like you guys, the buyers and printer builders, but also for machine manufacturers. Um, the last was the one of the like big problems with extrusion systems is you know we as engineers we get very carried away with like performance and how hard it pushes um, and like how many gears can we get in there to like grip onto the filament. And what we actually forget is that a lot of extruders are really annoying to use. Like they really suck you there, putting the filament in. And so we decided to try and adopt a more user-centric design policy um, from going with Hermes, and that's really key to a bunch of the features that you see going on with Hermes. So what we've ended up with is something that doesn't look altogether that different from Titan Arrow. We've got what is the remnants of an Eva 17 with a heat sink on the front, um, but that's kind of where the similarities end. The first part of Hermes is the is the, the core of the drive system is, is this thing, and it's a motor. It's based on a NEMA 17 motor, but it is not a NEMA 17 motor. Effectively, what we've done is take the um, the magnets and the windings from the NEMA 17 motor, but then throw away the mechanical face plate and the rear plate and back plate, and we made our own. And by making our own, we're able to basically integrate the rear half of the extruder into the motor. So we save a whole bunch of mass, weight, and time, space, and cost as well. So the motor, oh, look at that, we have AV. Uh, so the motor itself, let's skip on, we're gonna go straight to the motor bit that I was naturally going about. Thank you so much. Okay, so this motor here, you can see it has bearing pockets, 
it has um, the kind of features for the pins and locating. That means we've got um, a really good foundation. The next really cool part is, as you see on the sides here, we have these T-slots, um, and these are a really neat hack. So you can put um, M3 square mats into those T-slots, and you've got flat sides, which means that you can basically bolt into the side of the extrusion system and clamp it onto any flat plate. Backwards here to the start. So from the motor, we then go into the filament drive system. The filament drive system is obviously really core to what Harry is, what it does and why it does it so well. Um, we have a set of drive teeth. Um, and they are dual drive. Um, dual drive has been around for a long time in the market now, um, but we think we've taken it and uh, done it kind of in 3D style. So the gears are completely fully hardened all the way through. They're made of a uh, really high carbon Martin Citrix stainless steel. So they will bite into any hard fill, you know, films with hard fillers in them, like carbon fibers and stuff like that, without wearing. Um, the other part is that they are um, extremely wear resistant against themselves, which means that we don't require lubrication on, on the gears. And if any of you run extruders that do require lubrication, you'll be familiar with all the kind of guff and fluff and filth that builds up inside the extruder that's stuck to the oil. So we've got rid of lubrication inside of the extruder. There are two sealed bearings, um, and, but then we use Iger's bushings in other places. So you see here, we've got this Igus bushing, where others, a lot of the time, use needle roller bearings. Those needle roller bearings can get, um, again, filament debris into a needle roller bearing cage. It's all fouled up, and you've got moving parts with contamination in them. The Igus bearings do a fantastic job of, well, basically just not caring about contamination. Um, it also reduces cost, reduces weight, reduces size. Um, we get tons of drive force, way more drive force than you would ever need to drive any filament um, extrusion system. And the other neat thing about dual drive is because you're applying a symmetric load rather than a single-sided load, the filament drives in a kind of more straight fashion. Um, that's really critical for when we are doing things like picking be flexible. Because if you take flexible and you drive it from one side, it kind of likes to foul up because it's soft and you're pushing on it from one side. Uh, we've got all the points there. Next up, um, some gear points for you. Um, we spent a long time going through various surface treatments, material hardnesses, and things like that before we arrived at the material that we could machine efficiently yet provide us with the hardness that can deal with really highly filled materials and run against itself without lubrication. Um, that, was, that was an effort. You see all these parts here, um, they're made as, as single widgets. And we actually we produce these widgets on the same machinery and kind of supply chain that is used to make Swiss watch parts. So it's like these seven axis Swiss lathes that cut the tiny gear teeth one by one um, incredibly accurately. That yeah, the, the machinery that we're cutting is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so we talked a little bit about driving on both sides, which is what you can see here. The bit that's really hard to demonstrate on the screen, um, but if you come and see it in person, is that the filament exits the drive gear that is being driven, um, two minutes remaining, Lord have mercy. Um, but basically, where you're driving the filament and where it gets melted is about 10, 15 millimeters apart. That means that if you've got squishy material, there's only 10, 15 millimeters of it. You can push on it really hard without it flexing. So if you look at the PLA and the TPU print, they're done with the same settings, same settings, yet you still get incredible retraction. And this one is in like 30 seconds. Uh, that's the difference in uh, drive distance between teeth and melt load. Hop on, single integrated system, super small, super light. Um, it's, people have been asking on the internet about the weight. It's like 380 grams at large count, somewhere between three and 400 grams. Um, we talked about the motor, very custom. Um, ta -da 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 -da. Um, the airflow optimization is really cool. The fins go up and to the side, which means the air goes up and to the side. It doesn't go down onto the print, cooling your print down and walking things. So you have this really efficient fan flowing up uh, everywhere. Uh, that's good. Um, 
the two slots on the side and you can mount it to the printer really easily, but it also means that you can mount stuff to the side of the extruder itself really easily, so you can put things like bed leveling sensors, uh, fans and stuff like that, like backpacks on the side of the extruder and everyone will be able to kind of share their backpacks on Thingiverse and take them around and so you'll be able to have one for a volcano, one for a V6, take off the V6 one, put the volcano one on, one for a volcano. You, we talked about user-centric design, um, which means that instead of having to uh, interact with the extruder from the sides and the top and the side and pull the levers, everything happens through the top. So we've got this kind of cam system that I don't have time to explain. Because if you're looking at the top, you can tension the filament, release the filament, and insert the filament. Um, all from one place without having to get access from the sides or design mounts from the side. So everything happens in one place at the top. It's really easy to interact with the extruder. Um, mounts easily, easy to design into printers. And the last thing that I will cover is every single one of these has an individual serial number. We're capturing more and more QC data as we go ahead. Um, for printer manufacturers, that's super cool. Um, but for you guys, we'll be building a user interface, a lot like Prusiman, um, if you like, where you can go on and look at your um, filaments, QC data. You can go on here and you can look at your extruder's QC data online, test it. It'll be amazing. I'll probably run over time now. Is that, did we hit the time? Glorious. Thank you very much. That's great. I'll see you this time. Thank you very much to Sanjay and E3D for the talk on the Hermes extrusion system. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content from Formulex 2019 and I will see you in the next one.